Before we begin coding, let's look at a simple class diagram that gives you an overview of what we're going to create. This diagram has one interface, one abstract class, and two concrete classes. The interface at the top of the diagram is named stack. The interface is going to list out all the public methods in the component. Side by side at the bottom of the diagram, we have two concrete classes, list stack and array stack. These are two different implementations of the stack that we're going to create for our component. In the middle of the diagram, between the interface and the concrete classes, is an abstract class called abstract stack. This is where we're going to implement methods whose implementations, whose method bodies, would be the same in either of our concrete classes. If we did not have an abstract class for this component, we would have to implement all of our methods in both of the concrete classes. And for some of those methods, we would end up with duplicate code. Before we leave this diagram, I want to talk a little bit more about the interface. A well-designed interface is central to creating a good component. That's because every component has two parts a specification, and an implementation. The specification tells you what the component does, and the implementation tells you how the component does it. In Java, the interface acts as our specification. But you have to be a little bit careful here, because if you're a developer and you just look at the signatures of the methods, you can't really get the full picture of how that component behaves. You need something in addition to those method signatures. You need something that tells you what those methods do. And that is the documentation. So in our bounded stack component, the specification will consist of the interface, the method signatures, plus the Java docs that tell you what those methods do. Because they're so closely related, I do tend to use the terms interface and specification somewhat interchangeably. If I think the distinction becomes important in a particular context, I'll try to point that out. Here's one more thing to think about when it comes to interfaces and specifications. The specification is how you, as a programmer, interact with the component. If you're trying to decide whether or not to use a particular Java component in an application, what do you do? Do you bring up the code for that component and inspect it? No, you don't. You look at its API, the Java docs. And of course, the Java docs do also contain the method signatures. So if the Java docs have all the information you need to use a component, why use interfaces at all for components? Well, compilers can't read Java docs is the answer. Java documentation gives us what we call an informal specification. Compilers and computer programs in general need something formal. Method signatures are formal. They tell the compiler the name of the method, how many arguments it takes, and what their types are, and they tell it the return type of the method. All of this support for interfaces and specifications gives us, as programmers, a lot of flexibility when it comes to implementing components. It lets us implement the same component in multiple ways. Suppose we're working on a program that uses a stack component, and in our code, we have a list-based implementation for the stack. Then, at some later point, we decide that we can make our program run just a little bit faster if we use an array-based implementation. Because both implementations share the same interface and the same behavior, we can swap out one implementation for another, and in doing so, we can know that we're not going to break our program. Functionally, our program is still going to do the exact same thing. 